Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and whoo, whoo, <laughs> okay, yeah, dude, this, this, yeah, so, so my buddy hit me up with this, and I go, dude, don't worry, do not worry, like, I am on this. So first of all, before we get into the subject matter of this uh, video, which is the absolute petty vindictiveness of the uh, so-called pros in the comic book community, um, uh, Expendables go to hell, doing amazing, $52,000. Uh, and then, just as a pure Expendables fan, I saw that there's news that there's going to be a Jason Statham, like, spinoff. Because uh, anytime you get, like, these huge casts, it gets really expensive. Like, the last the last movie had, like, 15 mem members in the team. Um, uh, so they're doing one that's going to focus on Lee Christmas. I'm like, Yes. Um, it's my favorite character in the whole uh, franchise. Sorry, Sly. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all about Lee Christmas. You, Sly's, uh, Barney Ross is my second favorite. Um, but uh, anyway, that's doing great. So the other thing is, you know, I, I get these uh, pictures of, of people getting my books. Some very, very nice. Uh, uh, well, so these are these are these uh, uh, boots that are used for inspections. They kind of are uh, shinier on the toes. This is a military thing that used to matter. Um, but I, I always consider these these boots to be cheating. Uh, and some first sergeants just wouldn't allow them. They're like, no, shine your boots. Um, but uh, anyway, we got uh, the Kyle Ritter cover of uh, uh, God King and the Ethan Van Skyver cover. Which I just found out that I'm getting the original art. I didn't. I I, I was not aware. I was like flabbergasted on that one. And then I don't know who designed these Gambit and uh, Batman statues, but those are the coolest statues I've ever seen, like ever. So that's awesome. Uh, got some nice uh, art here, and the uh, these are the prints. By the way, that reminds me, I got to send out a couple more of those. Um, but uh, uh, those are uh, really nice. I like those. And I should add some prints to the uh, Expendables. Yeah, shouldn't I? Okay, so got to remember to do that. I'm also going to do t-shirts, but those will be separate. So the add-ons function, I tried that. It, it doesn't, all it does is cause problems in fulfillment. So it's just going to be like a separate thing. Um, lots of comics. Wow. A lot of manga. One Punch Man. Subasha. I don't know. Other ones, that's cool. It's got Cyber Frog there. This is, uh, trying to remember, Sacramento? And, yeah, I mean, uh, I, if I feel, the funny thing is, even though I'm a Marvel Comics fan, not how it's run right now, but the characters in the world, um, it seems like my fans who buy my books are more DC fans, and that's very interesting. I'm gonna have to think about that because you really wanna, like, I have all these metrics on everything. Like, I know, like, I have a, like tons of fans in Australia. I was like, there needs to be an Australian member of the Jawbreakers. Like, I have tons of Australian fans, um, and they deserve it for you know. They're they're always very forgiving. They're always just they're just happy the book got to them. I was like, How, well, how's the condition? They're like, it's good, but you know, well, I'm literally on the other side of the world, so. Boy, I really just missed a really good opportunity to, to do my awesome Australian accent. I'll remember next time. Okay, so so what we are jumping into is the uh, the comic book uh, community. Uh, this uh, uh, fake group of friends. I did a live stream with Ethan, Cecil, John Malin was there. And uh, I've got to say, I've been in two wars. I've been all around the world. The worst people I've ever met in my entire life are in the comic book industry. We're talking about petty, vindictive, malicious, evil people. <laughs> like, I have literally had my boot on the back of a terrorist bomb maker to keep him from escaping. You know, when we're, when we're driving in the MRAP to go take him to be detained. And I did not sense the level of maliciousness and evil from him that I do from the people in this industry. Um, and they've uh, they've strangled it to death. It, 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 it's all gone. There are still going to be shops, but they're going to be called comic book shops. It's going to go where you go, buy Funko Pop dolls, you buy uh, T-shirts, you're going to buy back issues. But like the direct market, 
that's been around for 30 years, like it's, it's in hospice. It's done. You know, that's the deal about hospice. You don't come out of hospice. I mean, you do, but as a body, you're not like, like walking around. Um, dude, can you imagine the hate you get from the other people in the hospice if like you recovered? You're like, hey man, I'm good. Everyone would be like, fuck you. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, anyway, so this is Colin Bunn. I've roasted him a lot. I refer to him as a super talent boy. This is someone who gets a lot of work and is just exceedingly bland. Um, uh, Matthew Rosenberg would be another uh, super talent boy. I've, I've, but I have misdiagnosed people. As, I, I called Jerry Dugan one for a while. People were like, eh, this ain't it, bro. And then like I read his Dead Eyes book and it's so good. I can't find the latest one though. I can't find it anywhere. Um, so what happens is Cullen Bunn, well, I'll just get into it. So he's, he's written, I'll, you know, I'll probably hover over and I'll describe him. I hope it's got his pronouns. New York Times best-selling writer of The Six Gun, Hero Country, Bone Parish, and Dark Ark. That's interesting. He's not mentioning his Marvel stuff. That's interesting. Okay, cool. All right, so we're, we're going to start off. He says, so, okay. Just talk. You don't have to do this teenager speak. I know the mean girls that are, have this stranglehold on the industry. They, 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 you feel like you have to talk like them. You don't. You're a man. Talk like a man. So, okay, so he, that's how he did it. So if, if you're going to start talking like a thought, I'm going to give you a thoughts voice. So an editor called me last night to tell me that someone is telling other editors and publishers that I use ghostwriters. This infuriates me for so many reasons, not the least of which is that it, it is 1000% untrue. So a couple things, you know, I'm just going to be straight up honest. The idea that Colin Bunn has the money to hire a ghostwriter is laughable. I know the page rates that people of his level make. You would be better off managing a Taco Bell. I'm not even kidding. That's not an insult. That's like a legitimate like life coach advice. They're they're making uh, you know 100,000 plus in some markets right now. So um, one of the you know there's there's several elephants in the room already. Number one is that, I'm just going to say this out, SJWs do not want to live in the world they've created. They created this world, this industry, this community of constant surveillance, of constant purity tests, of constant, you know, rumor mongering, of constant, you know, ooh, did that person talk to that person and then he liked this tweet and this person said this to this person. Um, it, is, it is a level of petty vindictiveness and immaturity that does not exist anywhere else on the planet the closest thing is a middle school lunchroom um and so to me the thing that's not jumping up jumping out is that oh someone's going around and bad mouthing him it's that that is remotely acceptable in this industry like i used to work in tech the idea that someone would just like call random people to badmouth them the only person that would hurt is the person doing the calling. The elephant in the room here is that Colin Bunn is complaining about something that is not just a common practice in the industry, but a constant practice in the industry. And what's so galling to me, what got me so emming effing fired up is the petty vindictive mean girls that create this atmosphere then they're trying to do that little, you know, uh, coaxing, soothing thing. I'm going to name names in this. So we'll, we'll read his whole thing. So it went so far as they named some of my books and said, quote, I was the writer on that, end quote. Yes, I write fast, though not as fast as I once did. <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> you're, like, you're like an old gunslinger. You still got it. Like, Okay, whatever. Um. Uh, SJWs brag about weird things. They'll brag about like poundage. Like I wrote 1500 pages. Nobody cares. Nobody cares that you write fast. And yes, I work long hours. That's why I'm able to complete these projects. That's the only way it has ever worked for me. But if I wrote a book with anyone, so yeah, so basically he's just saying, no, I, I don't ghostwrite stuff. Um, honestly, at the, at the rates that they're paying most writers these days, does, does anyone really care? Okay. So, um, 
Well, he says, so now I'm dealing with some folks who are hesitant to hire me because of this. I'm reaching out to every editor I know over the next few days. If you're an editor who has heard this, I'd love if you'd let me know. In the end, though, working in comic books does not need to be so damn diabolical. Well, we're going to look at the people. It's the, everyone that made the industry diabolical is in here soothing you. So um, sometimes it's a little, you know, Philip Hester, you know, he's fine. But uh, Heather Antos, this is one of the lead. This is one of, this is probably the lead mean girl. Again, I haven't really talked about her that much. We have a history. I called her a fake geek girl. Then she retaliated by implying that I was a white supremacist. And then three months later, I called her something rude in a private video. All that gets, you know, hand waved away. But uh, Heather is a, is the most petty and vindictive person in the comic book industry. And she treats the industry like a middle school lunchroom. People are terrified of her. Uh, people will, uh, you know, obsequiously try to seek her favor because they know how vindictive she is. Um, and, it, you know, I'm just going to say it straight up and down. Don't contact her. Don't contact any of these people. Um, they will take anything that's not agreement or a compliment as harassment. Uh, but so Heather's like, Jesus Christ, that is so fucked up. Um, as someone who has edited you for five plus years now, I can vouch for you 100%. Fuck that person. No, no, no. I'm not going to curse. But you you create this industry, Heather. You create it. Gail Simone creates it. Tess Fowler creates it. Chris Sabella creates it. Mark Wade creates it. And dozens of more. You guys spend all day long purity testing each other. Gail Simone has been doing it much longer than Heather. She is vindictively contacting people. You're talking to this person. You're working with that. You're working with this, 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 this. No, no, no. Work on your scripts. Work on your scripts. It is not high school. It's not middle school. And don't do this like, uh, you know, I have had so few truly awful editors. Most have been wonderful. But the tiny handful of the really bad ones ruin everything they come in contact with. Oh, excuse me. I have a question. I have a question. Because didn't Sean Gordon Murphy just spend a week being shark attacked by every single mean girl and, you know, effeminate co-conspirator males that you were not allowed to say anything, even mildly disparaging, not just of a specific editor, but just editors in general. But, you know, we have different rules for different people. Gail Simone is probably the oldest, not oldest as in, you know, age on the planet, but the one who's been the mean girl the longest, the one who's been constantly behind the scenes trying to hurt people's careers, uh, you know, uh, oh, that person talks to this person, you really want to work with this. No, 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 no. Not caring about sales of the companies that hire her. All caring about this, this extremely catty uh, behavior. So then, what, what is, oh, oh, thanks, thanks. Oh, thanks for the pat on the head. <laughs> Why are you thanking her? She created this. I'm trying to see... Who else, you know, uh, who else pops into this, you know, uh, little uh, vindictive uh, coaxing circle? But uh, yeah, so you got the people, then you got people that kind of stand by, you know? Fabian Nicia isn't really the type that, you know, joins in on this, but Tom Taylor absolutely is. But the thing I got to say to people is when you see someone do something to someone else, they'll do it to you. They're just waiting for an excuse. You've seen these people, they've been on the, the, the Facebook, you know, uh, private groups. They've been on the freaking hangouts. They've been on all those things where someone's like, this person was talking to this person. We're not going to talk to this person. And, and I just, you need to be someone, you, you don't have to be confrontational. You can just, you can just nope out. You're like, eh, I'm Paul and this is between y'all. But you say it. So, you know, you're being petty as fuck. This is the adult world in a dying industry. Yes, the comic book direct market that most of these people make their paltry li livings on, it's going away. It is shrinking so small, and they don't have the soft skills, the social skills, to go sell their books. Can you imagine them putting like a, a Kickstarter? Um, like, I did a thing. Okay, fine. Have fun making $1,800 off of this. But Tom Taylor, definitely very active. In this freaking, you know, uh, circular firing squad. 
and then one of their own accidentally stumbles into the middle. The thing about this is that person ratting him out should have immediately, it should have been unheard of. The person who was called should have been confused. You'd be like, Haha, let's just call this person John Smith. <laughs> You're crazy, John. What's this about, really? I'm, I'm sorry, what? So you called me in the middle of the day. I'm very busy. Just to just to throw shade on someone, to spread some rumors about them? Do you, under, do you understand this is business? Okay, lose my number. I'm not going to rat you out to everyone, but do not call back again. You're a clown. You are a child. Click. Like I said, if you work in tech, trying this stuff, it, 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 people would not have gotten angry. Like I said, they would have thought it was a joke or they would have thought it was like, oh, I'm missing something. What, what is the deal? What are we doing here? Wait, wait you're, you're, you're spreading rumors? Okay, so I don't know if that's true about that person, but I know I don't trust you anymore. I don't respect you. I, I can't count on you at all. Like, where, uh, my buddy said this about, you know, people in a similar situation. He says they have cut themselves off from reason. At what point, you know, people really don't like each other. At what point do you sit there and say, you're, you're, you're 35, 45, 55, and you're calling someone else like some catty middle school girl. Did you see Sally was talking to Jane? But Jane likes Michael? Like, that's what you're doing. And then when this Cullen Bunn gets caught in it, you go, oh, that's so sad. You know, the world that we created, that's really unfair. How does he say it? How does he say it? Sorry, I'm so many gifts. <laughs> oh, when you got, oh, geez. And, and then, like, like I said, Sean Gordon Murphy got pilloried by absolute frauds. Absolute frauds who do not belong in the industry. Sean Gordon Murphy is a young elder statesman. He is a young master in this forum. And he was being pilloried for a week straight by frauds. By losers who sell bootleg Judge Dredd merch to afford coach airfare. By people who respect themselves so little that they literally sell their skin color and gender. Hello, I'm skin color gender. You should hire me for many things. They don't even, they're, they're not even pretending to have talent. They're skipping past talent. We're in a post-talent industry. So yeah, he said something about like, you know, the industry just doesn't have to be so awful. What does he say? In the end though, working in comic books does not need to be so damned diabolical. It absolutely does not. There needs to be a, a what is it, uh, Augean stables washing, a redirecting of a river to wash out. And the thing is, what did it is destruction. <laughs> this is basically, this is a uh, industry that is being cleansed by fire. It is, it, is, it is so toxic. It is so vile and diabolical and petty and vindictive that it has destroyed themselves. And we're out here, outside the sandy limits, because we were shunned and we're just like, oh, damn. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Okay, so then we just go on with our dates because we're we're in some you know nice safe ground. We were we were shunned into an area of clean soil, uh, and and we're, and we're growing our projects. But the idea that Heather Antos, uh, uh, Gail Simone, who create this petty vindictive uh, circle, this uh, immature non industry, want to uh, soothe him for finding his, his way into the middle of the circular firing squad is absolutely ridiculous. I want to see if there's any more, you know, extreme irony, uh, you know, Tom Taylor, he's, he's not, you know, in the, uh, he's not in the inner circle, but he's definitely very active. Jerry Conway, for some reason, decided to jump into this immature game in his seventies. Uh, see who else. Yeah. Mike Norton, he's a minor figure doing this stuff, but I mean, most of these people are joining in on this stuff every Jody Hauser, definitely, you know, one of them every single day. Who's right? Who's wrong? Who's on the wrong side of history? Who's garbage person? Who talked to this person? They're literally cataloging. Liked tweets. They, I had this happen to me. I saw it happen to, uh, what was it? People like Brian Edward Hill. And this is, this was years ago. Uh, oh, I saw you like this person. This person talks to you. You really want to think about, no, not, a, yikes, not a good look. This is not hyperbole. These are the worst people that the human race has ever produced. 
And all they're doing is just sitting in this world they have destroyed saying, you know, it's, it's just, I just don't really like it. It feels very evil and diabolical. No, no, you made this. You made this. Seeing if there's any more super ironic entries here. It's a little weird because you got to like click on every single one. I feel like there's some gold here and I'm just I'm missing it. So I'm going to click on the individual ones. Ron Mars, totally, totally one of them. Totally. Ron Mars, Kurt Busiek, uh, this Kelly Fitzpatrick. Again, don't contact any of these people. These people are all day, every day with this Mean Girls nonsense. Again, my point is that the idea of an adult calling another adult to badmouth someone, it, 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 that is commonplace. So these editors are taking the call because they take this call all day long, because they make this call all day long. Oh, Sally was talking to Jane, who's dating Bobby, who's a garbage person, friends with uh, Claudio. And just all day, and, like, dude, like making comics, it's like busy work. I work seven days a week. I work till three or four in the morning. Some days, some nights, early mornings, whatever you want to call it. The idea that any of these clowns have one second of a day, even if they, even if they, they were so immature to think that this is acceptable, you would think they would just be too busy. They're like, I really want to destroy this person for talking to this person who talked to the other person I don't like, but I've really got to get this book out. So priorities of work. No, no, the, the, destroying people in this. Like I said, there, there, there are these, there, there's these queen bees, and everyone knows who they are because they're afraid of them. Heather Antos, Gail Simone, Tess Fowler, Mark Wade, Chris Sabella, a couple dozen others. Every day in this game, every day in this Mean Girls game. And then when one of them caught, gets caught in it, and not that Cullen Bunn was that bad, but he knew about it and he played along with it. I, I have no sympathy for them. All, all I'm going to try to do is keep these clowns as far away from uh, me and my business as possible. But yeah, oh yeah, well, got to have those gifts. Yeah, got to have those gifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's basically what you did to the comic book industry. Yeah, so that, uh, what is it, a cell phone? Yeah, that's you guys have been doing that to the industry for like the last five years. And then you're wondering why you can't make any calls. Ah, oh, gifts. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's about all I have to say about that um uh luckily that this uh shitty little direct market is not all of comics it's just one destroyed part of it these clowns have really no skills as we they've seen we've seen from their abject failure um and uh now they just get to just lie in the rubble of their own destruction it's a little dramatic but accurate and true again please don't contact even one of these people i am not kidding these people are the most petty vindictive people who have ever existed for minorly displeasing them for one minute they will have no problem destroying their your entire life if they are able to so don't contact them by any means don't do it so anyway uh thanks for watching go check it expendables go to hell <laughs> um thanks for watching subscribe make sure you're still subscribed hit the bell for notifications thanks to everyone uh, given to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. And I'll have a, 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 a reviewing an indie book. Uh, uh, it's got an interesting story behind it. Uh, so that'll be my next video later tonight. Thanks. Bye.